Yo, what's up? Good morning. This is Dale. You're listening to Good Morning Bitcoin. It's Thursday, September 24th. Uh, what's up, LD? How we doing? Doing well, man. Doing real well. Happy to be here. Happy. Made some, did some trades today. Got some airdrops. Felt like that consumed all of my day. Oh yeah. Yesterday. Yeah, all day yesterday. That's all I did was enter the uh, all these free airdrops and a number of them were scams of course Naturally. rug pulls but over the past couple of days we've gotten into some solid projects i think yeah soap and rope or two of um them. so whenever these airdrops ask for you to send 0.1 ethereum i've just come to the conclusion it's a scam yeah i think i think so now too and I hadn't been rug pulled in a while. And I think you, Mike, and I all got rug pulled on corn. Was that it? Uh, yeah, but I didn't send any ETH to it. Oh, you didn't? See, no. Mike and so I, I did, sent, I didn't lose anything. Sure. Uh, Mike and I, it was just double spending, sent point one. So, well, what do you do? Yeah. Happens. Happens. Just don't do it. Just don't That's do it. it. Yeah, I, I done learned my lesson. Yeah, if they're gonna if they're going to run the airdrop, then they can figure out how they're going to make it happen. You know, I yeah. don't feel like it's up to I don't me. need to provide liquidity. <laughs> not at that point. Not that this early. No, not at all. So I, I got to say, I'm pretty geeked about our guest this morning. Oh, yeah. Um, you caught some of it pre recording, and Prince and I were reminiscing on our crypto street days. And it just feels good to be joined by my man. Uh, probably up the biggest homie one of them in this space prince what's up hey man ld dale it is nice to be here this I, is like the first first ep- episode i've done with any kind of podcast since uh since the last time i recorded with crypto street yeah so, it, uh, it feels good to to get you here get your insight and for those that don't know um, I was blaring Nickelback when Prince yeah. came on because they're the greatest band known to man. It just so. set the tone. It set the tone. So I don't know if everyone knows, but I got to tell the story of Philly. And LD, you were there too, not in the taxi, but you were in Philly with us. Yes. <laughs> so we went out, Crypto Street, and then LD and, and Crypto Noob Girl, Colleen, you guys went out there. We uh, were talking at a conference, and it was Sunday morning early. Prince and I pretty much had the same flight time. So we catch an Uber together and we're waiting outside of this casino hotel type place. And it's like 4.35 in the morning and this fat old Tahoe black tinted windows strolls up with 22s on it. And this, <laughs> so Prince in typical Prince fashion is like, get a fucking load of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, what I was I was like half awake, half yeah. asleep still. It's super early in the morning. I was just like, holy fuck, all right, this is gonna really this is setting the tone. We're setting the tone for the day here. It was a great day. And so we get in and this guy, Rockstar, is blaring by Nickelback. And Prince like looks at me and like nudges me and points to the radio and he's like, Hey guy, you mind turning this up a little bit? <laughs> so the guy starts just thumping this nickelback rockstar. <laughs> he was all for it. Oh yeah, it was great. Yep. So what a, it's always <laughs> good Prince. Uber rides I've been in. Oh, it was, it was one of the greatest. And the dude was so nice. Yeah. He was so cool. Nice. Yeah. So what have you been up to? Oh, same old shit. I've been just trading and it's been, the markets have been a lot of fun. Like mm-hmm. this all, like the entire summer, they, it, it's been a lot of fun. I, I got into that whole the uni swap game the trenches there and august was pretty insane for that um now that kind of died down it, it's not what it was and now we're just back to trading all futures and just doing what i'm doing some plays and some stuff that hasn't hit the market yet um cash you know it's kind of just surfing the market but yeah the market like it, they were kind of you know like it, everything was just kind of boring for a while yeah right? it like was. there wasn't really any anything exciting about crypto for a long time it felt like mm-hmm. and it, the summer the summer kind of changed the, the vibe i'll say like at least for me it changed and i don't know i'm sure it was like that for a lot of other people because it was just like holy shit like now we got 
what we've seen airdrops free tokens to people that have turned into like being worth 700k or so us yeah. dollars uh was- like we've seen some absolutely insane stuff where uh wi-fi wi-fi is that how you here's me and my pronunciations is that how we're <laughs> calling it uh is that what we're uh, wi-fi i just call it wi-fi that's what uh, I, I call it, it too yeah yeah like we got to see this thing just go absolutely eight mode and i don't even like i you know what i was one of those dickheads who i bought a bunch when it was at like 4k and then i was like oh sweet i just hit like I get, it goes up to like 7k or so and i'm like oh nice like this is a nice profit i'll just i'll just bail on this entire position and then i end up getting to watch it go all the way up to 40k right yeah. So I was I was one of those dickheads who got to just kind of watch and just wonder what where did I go wrong in life for this? Uh, <laughs> you know um, what? You got in at least though. I uh, yeah. and I have also heard some people got in at like two dollars, four dollars, oh, and yeah. then cut ties way earlier than some than crazy you. stories with that. It's and then uh, like what else? We had the Uniswap airdrop, the you know universal basic income for crypto Great degenerates name. yeah right. nice little <laughs> stimulus package for yeah, us it was fantastic yeah. and, and that was that was cool like that i that was one of the coolest things i've seen in a while in crypto, oh, yeah. you know like because that was a really interesting time when it happened too because like even and that wasn't it wasn't long ago but it was just like at the time when they released that it was like holy shit like ethereum like are we going to get some life to it here? Like what, what mm-hmm. happened to the market? Like uni swap coins were just looking terrible. And then, then the uni drop came and it was like, holy crap. Like now we got some life to everything again. So yeah, crypto has been exciting as hell the last all summer. Really. It's been a lot of fun again. And crypto is not always fun. No, so this is, God, this, no. yeah, this is something, you know, you know, your favorite influencers might, might not agree with this, but <laughs> on this show, on this show, we keep it real. And that's right. Crypto is not always fun, but you know, we're um, having fun. So, question then, that it, or real quick first, that Unis that Uni drop, yeah, that was, and I think I said this on the show the other day. That was the first airdrop I've had that ever has amounted to more <laughs> than like fifteen cents. I've never, I don't know, like because you hear these stories about people who like they just go around collecting airdrops, like that's their entire strategy, right? Yeah, and. I'm always like, man, I couldn't be bothered to go around doing this. But then oh. you hear some guys and it's like, yeah, man, I just had a huge cash out on this one airdrop. And, you know, and then we see this meme airdrop, which yep. here's one. I was in that. I was. Do you, you think were? I held it? Oh, I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was in that and I was out by, I don't know, like $30 or whatever. I oh, just, my gosh. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> but I mean, honestly. And how do you know? Yeah. Well, and how exactly. do you. How do you know? It's like, yeah. you know, the only way, you know, and I what this whole thing was sparked by uh, Andre or whatever. The, the, the I don't want to even pronounce his last name because I'm going <laughs> to butcher it. I know I'll butcher it. Um, but it was, it seems like it was really sparked by him kind of showing inf- interest in it and kind of working with it somehow. Am uh-huh. I, am I wrong here? Like I don't, I wasn't following the whole developments that closely, but I remember seeing him start tweeting about it. And then all of a sudden I remember starting to see people talk about, Whoa, this airdrop is suddenly worth a lot of money, man. And mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, you gotta be kidding me. So I don't know. I wish I could be like, a close friend of his or something. Get no shit. Have him pop our bags. Yeah. All right, Andre, what are you tweeting about next? Like what's, <laughs> what's the next project you got on your radar? The, like the hardest part about it all. And you know, I've said it on here before I got in, was it STBU? I think LD. Yeah. Is that yeah. the one we got in? Or no, no, I'm talking, I'm thinking flow. I got in flow at like, I don't know, two cents, seven cents, something. And then it, it tripled. And so I sold, my original investment and then at like 38 cents i sold my moon bag and then i proceeded to watch to like six (laughs) dollars and i'm like god why in the world and then you know naturally bought back in on a dip at five and now it's like 34 cents yeah and get absolutely smoked yeah yeah that's uh that's usually how it goes right it's like Mm -hmm. uh, you'll sell once you'll make some great returns you'll be really content with it and then you'll watch it go way higher and you'll be like, well, I feel like a big dumb idiot. Like I gotta, I gotta get back yes. into this. And then you get to really feel like a big dumb idiot because then the price <laughs> goes lower on you. 
Yep, that's 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 par for the course. I've been there a few times. It really I just, is. I just don't look back. <laughs> that's my strategy. Probably. Usually, when I sell a bag, I, I think it's like one of those things Messiah, Messiah goes by Messi is you know when he sells a bag, he just doesn't give a shit anymore. He doesn't even yeah. look at it. And mm-hmm. I'm the same way because I remember like. Tendies, Tendies was a good play for me, and I was in that r- really early. Like, I, you know, I remember seeing that, like, my Tendies trade literally happened because I jumped on Twitter. I see Sicarius tweet about buying Tendies, and it was literally like he had posted it like thirty seconds, and I had just stumbled upon it in the first thirty seconds. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. I get a vibe of what this market's <laughs> like right now, so I'm just gonna throw some money at it. We'll see. Like, it's a complete meme coin we've seen how this goes right yeah okay i wake up the next day and it's like oh shit i'm up some money here i ended up completely bailing um at like 80 cents so i i think i bagged like a 10x because i was in there i was in there you were in there below. super early i was I in remember there early. You, seeing yeah. you in another group talking yeah. about it i was in there really early like under 10 cents and everything um anyway so you know you, you bail out uh, okay you're feeling pretty good right you got nailed a nice multiplier and then you know tendies is that case for you it's like oh uh, you end up i'm and it's like i wasn't watching it but i have buddies who are still in it and it's like holy crap tendies just broke two dollars i'm like you gotta be shitting me like <laughs> i don't have any of this thing i left this a while ago and it's like and you know the way it would move it would just completely it would just like pump a hundred percent in like a matter of a day at times yeah. and then you know, so it's like you'd sell one day thinking, yeah, okay, this is probably the right move. And then the next day it's up 100%. It's like, oh, good, good. This is <laughs> this is good. But fortunately, I never chased it back and bought higher or anything. But I got to watch that one run away a lot higher on me after where I initially sold that. It sucks. You know what we need to think when we sit and watch it go up? Here's what we need to think. I, this just came to my head. This is genius. We need to think, hey, at least I don't have to pay taxes on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, wow, like shit. It. Like, I don't even want to think about that with these uni swap <laughs> plays. My God. Like, so when you pick them out, is there anything in particular that you would watch for? Or is it just kind of uh, like LD and I? You I'm going to be straight up. Like, it was uh, like, I, uh, so God, like be straight up. Like a lot of it was just pure gambling literally just taking some ethereum and saying okay i think by my limited experience of looking at code and contracts sure uh, i'm not gonna get some dickhead minting and an infinite supply over top of my head Uh and then it's like okay can you know if they're gonna rug rug me or something there you go you got all these hats going on here (laughs) Um, if they're gonna rug me you know like what's it looking like the probabilities for that uh but man like i don't know like it's you know like anyone who's in the markets daily you know anyone and they'll all i imagine everyone will agree is like you can feel the you know there's everything changes like the the whole market dynamic changed Uh in it was changing in July and then August, it fucking really changed. And that was like when people really started to notice. Right. Yeah. And so when you get these markets, it's just like those times, which, and we had that in August where it's like, take the gamble, right. Take, mm-hmm. take the gamble. And like, totally. uh, like I had a buddy who has never been in crypto before and he decided to get in. Uh, it was like end of July and he was like, or no, it would have been the start of July, start of July. And he was like, yeah, I don't really think much of this stuff, but we're going to, you know what? I'll, he literally put 20 bucks in. Okay. Now it, I, I laugh pretty good at this. He put 20 bucks in at the end of August, $20 wouldn't even have covered your gas fees. Right. Right. Like, how yeah. funny is this? Right. So he put 20 bucks in, threw it on uh, that MXC and we were pretty much, I was just like, okay, man, like if this is the type of market, which I'm feeling like it is just tail what I tell you to buy. And we're going to make some money here, but don't, you know, and I was like, don't get confused. It's not always this easy. Yep. Um, anyway. So he turns that like $20 into like 250 bucks. So he's like, Holy shit. Like, I, you know, he's feeling pretty good. Right. He's like, all right, here we go. So he throws all his extra money in I'm like, all right. And that was, you know, he, so he dumps more in end of July and well, then he ends up catching uh waifu right at the start. Nice. Uh, and so, and he, 
so he crushes that so this guy you know he's like on top of the world right <laughs> he's and i love uh, he's turned into an art collector now a digital art collector <laughs> that's his new game that's his big focus is digital art so so when someone sees him in the street they're like hey man what are you up to uh, yeah. i collect digital art <laughs> <laughs> he's he's going hard man he's an animal on some of these marketplaces he has a nice collection too but anyway it's just funny to see now here's a guy who has literally got into a market like just started july first time ever uh he and i got to witness you know the full range of you know kind of emotions uh with him because he was he had never experienced it before and it was really interesting to watch because I remember Waif uh, with Waif. Uh -huh. We're watching this thing go up and up and up. And he's like, dude, like, is it really like this is the easiest thing ever? He's like, I can't like, what have I been doing all my life? He's like, I'm going to be I'm going to be a millionaire in no time. I'm like, OK, oh, I like, remember that I'm, feeling. <laughs> I'm like, OK, I'm like, I'm going to remind you right now. Enjoy this while it lasts because it never lasts. But while it is here, we got to try to ride this, right? And yeah. So now, you know, market's been going, getting hit pretty good. He's kind of, now he's getting the full experience, right? He's like, oh, <laughs> shit, okay. Things don't just go up forever. They also go down pretty hard. But, you know, he's still up quite a bit of money. And it's fun to watch because I get to see all these things that it's like, oh, shit. I remember doing exactly this. Or I remember my mindset being the exact same. Mm -hmm. And so it is it's nice because it's almost it keeps you it keeps you more on your toes actually i found i've been i've been trading a lot better like granted august was pretty august was easy it was that was like 2017 mode right throwing yeah dirt, for sure or blindfolded and you'll make money but even this month has been really good and it it's just been good to have that kind of refresher mentally it's like because to me that's probably the part that i i gotta kick myself over the most is just where my you know my headspace gets at and usually i can look back and be like yeah no shit i took some big losses there because i was in a dumbass headspace right yeah. like i was i wasn't where i should have been to be trading so so let's i know you know i've known you for a long time in mm. in crypto years this forever basically <laughs> yeah and the one thing you've always really preached to me is that you know this is more of a head game than anything yeah. Yeah. So let's just, can you just elaborate a little bit on that? And I know you well, don't like to get personal, so <laughs> don't, you don't have to get personal, but just kind of, you know, how. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, well, yeah. trading is so similar to sports, right? Mm -hmm. Like there, that's what, like, why do you see so many ex athletes getting into the markets? Right. Because it's, there's so many similarities to it. Like it's, you yeah. know, you either win or you lose. Um, but I, like, I know, like for me, when I, if I can just stay in the moment, I, you know, stop thinking about position sizing like, or sizes, like how big my position might be uh -huh. and like, oh, and, you know, watching price run up and then refreshing and watching every cent that you're making. Uh -huh. To me, that's like the number one most cancerous thing I can do to myself when I'm in a good trade is consistently just sitting there refreshing what my position is worth. Like I'm, because at that point I, I can already tell you, I'm going to end up cutting it early. I'm not going to be able to ride it out as long as I should be able to ride it out because riding a good position is hard, right? Like it's that, that like people don't talk about, you know, how hard it is to ride a really good position. Um, because you can get caught up in just watching these little dollar swings. Like, you know, somebody mentioned it with like, even on BitMEX, how much more profitable do you think people would be if they didn't have that unrealized profit loss gauge mm. always telling them right there, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. they, they would probably be so much more profitable if they could just cut that out of their psyche for the moment and stick with, you know, their plan and what they're riding. And because it gets really hard, right? The more size you start trading, the more those dollar values start ticking up and down. It's like, holy shit, you start sweating. You're, you know, it's like, man, I could have bought a lot of things and mm -hmm. I'm down here on this position. It's like, holy crap. And, you know, but reality is you want to try to be able to stay in the moment and try and surf it. Right? You got to try to be able to ride them when they're really hot, which August was hot but it, there was a shift and it's so we're, it, we're not hot like August anymore. <laughs> no, sucks. I don't think we are. And I, but I do yeah. think there's still some plays out there. Oh yeah. yeah. I, to me, there's going to continue to be plays, but it's going to be different now. Like in August, you know what, man, like 
some of the shit I was playing in August, it makes me want to puke, right? Like, and I'm sure it's the same thing with a lot of you guys and yeah. many people listening. It's like, you know, it can't even believe some of the shit I was playing. It was just like, this is such a blatant garbage, but it was like the way the market was at the time, it was super frothy, right? Like I hadn't, I hadn't experienced the market like that in years. Like I would say the next closest time that the market was like that would have been maybe back in like, uh march la or not uh like before the big big dump we had there in march right so like eight april time frame and alts were pretty hot then too mm -hmm. but it wasn't anything like what we saw in august like august was just crazy it, it was insane and i remember thinking to myself it's like shit like well i had buddies who were making more money in one month in august than they had done in the entire bull run through 2017. Damn. So to wow. me, that really put it into like, okay, this is not going to be like a, a forever thing, you know, August. And it was like, you're going to have to try and lock some of the shit in because if you got people who are flipping, you know, returns like this on this pace, this scale, and they're only doing it in like under 30 days, it's like, yeah, that doesn't really seem you know sustainable and you know some of these guys aren't aren't the sharpest guys so it's like it's, like, <laughs> it's you know you start okay it's Present. like yeah yeah well it's it's just how it is right but you know it's that thing where the the guys who will make the most money when the markets get really really frothy are typically the ones who have absolutely zero uh risk control uh, they just don't care right and that's yeah. why they make such insane amounts of money when the markets get like that it you know that being able to do that is a gift all on its own but you got to be able to turn the switch off and go back to like hey i just need to chill i don't want to keep being in the market so that i can possibly lose all of this money i made right it's that it's that switch, which is the tough thing because a lot of guys just, like that yeah. don't have the switch, right? It's just like, gonna say that <laughs> you're going hard all the time, and there is no, you know, n no acceptance of any type of risk you might have. But I'm yeah. sure the market has everybody's been reminded of that in September here. Like I'm I'm the type where when I'm fiending, man, I am, you know, fiending, <laughs> yeah. and it's hard to oh, hard yeah. to be able to shut that switch off. I remember literally texting my buddy like, man, I, I don't know what it would be like to be tweaking out, but I think <laughs> I'm tweaking out for shit coins right now. Like, I, you know, it was like yeah. not having any type of like new position on some piece of crap on Uniswap. And I was like bothered by it. I was like, you oh, know, yeah. why don't I have a position in something? Because there's money to be made right now. Yep. Right. Yep. And it's like, you're just, you're like uncomfortable in your own skin. It's like, I was like, fuck, I haven't experienced this. I don't think ever like i didn't even experience that in 17 but i i was good in 17 but I, I i feel like i have a lot more skills now and i'm better than i was um but yeah you know that's that's funny you say that because i've often questioned myself you know where i am at as a trader now versus back in 17 you know in 17 i felt like most of my gains were just because i bought something and i held it no matter what the situation was i just sat and held and never you know i the bulk of my gains was from one coin and i think everyone on the sh on this knows the coin however you know looking back now on that i don't think i could i can hold something for that long now no yeah it's it's you know it's really it's i think i think that's the one thing i've done the most is kind of reflecting you know like all summer it was really like because you can kind of you know when you're in the markets when you're in crypto for you know as long as you guys are and all that you can feel it right like you can yeah. feel when there's a shift in the market you can feel when there's a shift in the mindset of traders it's not like we had a massive influx of new money coming into the market. It was the same no. money we've had in the markets, you know, for a long time now, but it was just the shift, the whole, there was a mentality shift and, you know, being able to recognize that, that's something that I don't feel I was able to recognize mm -hmm. as good um, a few years back. And this time I was able to recognize it and, I feel like I was able to capitalize on it a lot better than how I was going about capitalizing a few years back now. And this is, this is kind of the shitty part about, 
you know, what we got to experience here is how often are these type of things, you know, how, how often are we going to see these frothy environments now? Right. Because crypto there's, it's, it's such a cesspool at the end of the day, right? Like (laughs) anything good comes about, you're going to have like a million other pieces of crap that are going to dilute the shit out of the market in general. And, you know, and it's, they're just garbage. Like how many fucking Wi-Fi clones did we have after Wi-Fi launched and had all that success? How many, uh, you know, even now it's the NFTs. Yeah. Uh, like we're getting a whole bunch of crap on this NFT market because now the NFTs are hot. Um, or before there was a shit, there was another one. I was just thinking, Oh, airdrops. Cause meme had this really successful airdrop. So now we've had people just beating the shit out of this whole airdrop thing where it's, Oh, let's just create whatever crap we can because maybe we can just keep the froth going for, you know, a few minutes more. And, you know, they all know it's not going to last long, but they're hoping it's a quick buck. Right. So, this is kind of the shitty part now is the more crypto grows to me. It's like the more these really frothy environments, uh, if we don't have a massive influx of new money, it's, it's going to be really hard to sustain them because uh, people just tend to do a really good job at putting a bunch of shit out on the market when they see one good thing. And it's like, Hey, we got to copy this. We got to copy yep. this. And mm-hmm. then you'll get a bunch of copies that are straight up scams. Right. So that ruins reputations and that makes yep. people scared. Like, you know, you think like sushi swap, that was a f- really interesting saga to watch. And you know, when that's the sushi chef dumped his stuff on the market, like it was really interesting to watch how much that actually like changed the sentiment of you know, people in this whole DeFi yeah. scene, right? Like the traders, he, he actually kind of just put a fucking cork in it. He said with his actions, he kind of put a halt to the froth. It was right around then when things, and you know, people will be like, ah, whatever the market was due to come down anyways. But mm-hmm. it was that moment where I think a lot of people became like, okay, what are we really into here? Like, you know, if, if we got some random anonymous guy who's playing the party where they got all these, uh, you know, at value locked under their protocols, whatever they're farming. And then he just goes and does this after a few weeks, you know, that's, that scares the shit out of people. Right. And that is kind of what happened. The market definitely is not what it was before that. It's true. Yeah. Crypto so as a good way of just ruining a lot of things <laughs> by yeah. making like a million copies of one thing. And then, then they'll find the next cool thing they think to make copies of. So, yeah. Yeah run everything into the ground yeah, oh literally. God. it's For exactly real. it right like and and think about it now right what if what if we we're in a market where that all that crap didn't happen all the mm-hmm. time yeah. all of a sudden you have less assets out there you have more money that can look to go into the actual legit stuff that's been going instead of flowing into this garbage and you know some people losing all of their money in the process doing it you know so, so where well, do we crypto. go from here Oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Um, I don't know. Like I've been, I've been playing the market to the downside um, the last week or so, and I, I'm not comfortable doing that. But I have been, and that's been a good decision. But it, it's not one of those things where I want to be taking up a position where it's like, yeah put my feet down. I'm long-term bearish now because we've gone down this much. You know, I'm very curious to see what, how Bitcoin, like Bitcoin's got so much going on right now. Um, like, you know, you have micro strategy buying all that Bitcoin. It, to me, is just wild. Like that is one of the craziest things I think I've read about Bitcoin a long time. Um, and it's just, and it's not, it's not reacting the same, right? Like it's, it's dumping say it's gone down but it's not doing the ethereum dump right where ethereum it's just like who just you know slicing paper it's just going straight down and oh it is uh, but yeah but bitcoin you know it's not the same story bitcoin hasn't like bitcoin's been getting hit but it's nowhere near you know what everything else has been getting hit so i think it's going to be interesting now does you know big daddy bitcoin kind of start flexing a little bit are we going to see him start to outperform a lot of these uh, altcoins that were just going feverishly hot. I think that's a real possibility that we could see. Um, but, you know, we're going to, I think what MicroStrategy, their entry was around 11,200, 250 or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and they got 
I don't know how many Bitcoin, 39,000 Bitcoin. So I don't know. It's like five, 500 million US worth. Uh, so that's an interesting level to always keep in your mind. 11,250. Cause right. that's their, that's their entry pretty much. And so we know if they're underwater or in profits. So always keep that level in your head. Um, Smart. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Yeah. That's an easy one. <clears throat> All right. LD, you got anything else for Prince? Don't. I'm okay. just glad that he was I'm, able to come on the show. Yeah. Time flies. Thanks for being like, here, I'm looking man. at the, looking at the clock right now. You see, this is, I'm good at this. I can just talk and listen to my own voice this is, <laughs> and I can just go off. Right. And next thing you know, I look at the clock. It's like, Oh, we're go off. King. Yeah, we're 40 <laughs> minutes in. I always remember people giving me shit with crypto street. Cause it's like, Hey Prince, can you just shut the fuck up? Right now? Like <laughs> I want to listen. I want to listen to somebody else talk. So now actually being the guest, I, I can just this, run my mouth. Yep. Yeah. This, yeah. Stages yours. Yeah. No, this is fun though. I, I got to get on here again sometime. Yeah. Definitely. Um, we're actually having a round table next Thursday to talk about NFT. I know you kind of dabbled oh, a little bit. I do dabble. I do dabble. Uh, so, I'm starting to become, I like to think of myself as a bit of a digital art snob. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. A sophisticated intellectual. <laughs> Uh, of the digital kind <laughs> yeah i i really i do enjoy it like i've been i i've been throwing some money around on pieces i haven't like nothing like my buddy who i just got in he's been going hard like i'm i'm like i'm almost at the point where i'm like hey man you do realize like you're probably not going to be able to flip these super quick super easy right like you might be holding these forever and you realize this, right? <laughs> like, I'm just trying to like, you know, talk of like, you understand you might never sell these ever again. Like you might just be stuck with them and they, you know, you could be completely worthless. But I, I like this stuff. I, I use um, mostly, I don't like Rarible. I think mm -hmm. I, anyone who follows me knows that I hate that place. It's just a cesspool of an, an NFT market. And it's because anyone can upload anything. It's just that simple, which is cool in its own right. You know, it just gives people a market and a platform to get some stuff on. But with that comes the massive amount of garbage. There was um, a lot of garbage placed. Oh, it's just a ridiculous amount. Hours. It, it's just been, and it's been like, incre it's just been steadily increasing. Like, because I haven't liked Rarible for a while now since I started but it's just been getting worse and worse to me mm -hmm. because everybody's kind of catching on now. Like, Hey, I can just upload a picture here and I can Bam. list it for a dollar or a, a one Ethereum or whatever. And boom, I'm, I'm an artist now I can sell art. Um, so I, I like going shopping on these other markets, uh, super rare. I really like super rare, uh, probably because like, I don't know, it's just really easy and it doesn't crash my computer when I'm using it. So <laughs> me and I, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, you know, living, living retro style here with all my shit technology go figure right i'm in crypto and i hate technology but that um, happens yeah and uh super rare i think block party is i've never caught anything on there because i think they just do drops mostly mm. so they don't really have like a big active marketplace so okay. uh at least from what i've seen um but they're they're really solid and then uh well it's nifty gateway is good too and you know i think the, the thing with all of these uh, digital art marketplaces at least to me is like if they have some type of barrier to entry that's a pretty good sign right sure, um, sure. a lot of these do make you have to apply to be an artist and you have to pass kind of an ins which makes sense i mean right? honestly it, it's like fuck need it yeah mm -hmm. like, exactly all right well there he is everyone Christie's. Oh, yeah, what? we got Christie's doing a Christie's is doing an auction for some digital arts and I read today, which is that's really cool. cool. That's yeah. like the, yeah, it's like the first one that they've ever done. So Damn. I think that's, a, that's really neat, right? Like in terms yeah. of how is this digital art space going to, you know, evolve. And I definitely, th I didn't think much of it a month ago, but now I'm fully on board. Like there's definitely something there uh, where it, how it evolves. That's going to be really interesting to watch. Yeah. I do think there's something there. I just, uh, yeah. we'll see i guess <laughs> still not not the sophisticated intellectual i am by yet. no means as sophisticated <laughs> as you prince oh, yeah. not even on the same in the same <laughs> chapter 
I felt like I had to change my Twitter bio, sophisticated intellectual, just to be kind of yeah. ironic because anybody who actually follows me and sees my feed is like, man, this guy's got to be just a hillbilly or something. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're in the same boat, my man. Yeah. All right, make sure you follow him on Twitter. It's 13prince31. So, Prince, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, LD. This was fun, guys. Tell him. No beans for breakfast, Prince. Disgusting. <laughs> Never. Don't yeah, do no, it. No beans. No, no beans. beans no matter how hungry you are. <laughs> Don't do it. All right. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you guys on Friday. Take care. Have a good day. See ya.